One of the first things we want to do when we're evaluating relative strength, and whether that's a positive for a company or a negative, is to try to understand, well, why are they outperforming? The best place to start that kind of analysis is with beta. So beta looks at the company and its price performance and tries to figure out, well, why is the company performing the way that it is? Or why is the price performance of that stock performing the way that it is? Now you could think about beta as how correlated is the stock versus some kind of a benchmark. And usually that means it's the stock versus the S&P 500. So as you can see here, what I've done is I've shown beta on a spectrum. So beta, the Greek letter, and here on a spectrum with zero in the middle, a positive one on one side and a negative one on the other side. If a stock had a beta of one exactly, that means that it is highly correlated to the S&P 500. If a stock had a beta of zero, that means that the stock is not necessarily underperforming the S&P 500, but is not very correlated to the S&P 500. So in other words, when the index goes up, the stock does not necessarily follow it. And by the same token, it doesn't necessarily follow the index lower. If a stock had a beta of negative one, then that tells us that the stock is inversely correlated to the S&P 500. It's not gonna look like a mirror image of the index, but it'll basically move down most often when the index is moving up. It may move up when the index is moving down. And of course, having a group of stocks to be watching that look like that could be a great addition to a diversification strategy. So let's look at a few companies that have betas that range from a positive one to a negative one and how they look compared to the S&P. So as you can see here, the beta is very low, 0.27. You're never going to get one that's exactly zero. But what this tells us is that in this case, the, un the stock has underperformed a little bit, but basically what it's saying is that the stock has a low level of correlation. Sometimes it goes up and down with the index, sometimes it doesn't. So as far as diversification benefit goes, that's kind of a plus. Now here I have a beta that's a little greater than one. Now that is important. And in fact, we're going to use that to try to understand what's actually going on with the stock's relative performance. If the stock has a beta that's near one or maybe a little bit above or even a little bit below, what that says is that basically the company or the stock is going up at the same time the S&P is and down at the same time. But if it goes above one, and in fact they can go much above one, two, three, even four beta, what that says is that yes, it's correlated the S&P 500, not perfectly, but it is also more volatile. And we look at beta as a way to think about risk. So it's possible that a company has a really high beta and we would expect that in a bull market, it's probably gonna be an outperformer. And in a bear market, that same thing is gonna be true, but in reverse, the losses may be larger as well. Now here's a stock with a beta of negative one, almost exactly. This is pretty common actually. The stock in this case is the gold line. It's a gold miner. So gold miners do tend to have a negative correlation with the S&P, which means that they are probably going to be more volatile on average, but they'll almost look like a mirror image if we were to try to extract that volatility. So as you can see, when the S&P was going up in 2017, gold miners were going down in value. The choppier the market is, gold miners tend to go up in value. So this is a good example of the kind of industry group that we would expect should have a negative correlation. And it helps us to think about, well, in this case, the relative performance is there a reason why this particular stock is underperforming or not? And beta can help us to answer that question so we can be more objective when we're evaluating relative performance overall.